right now to some other top stories that we are following for you tonight. First from D.C. where a man was killed today in a road rage shooting. Police say a Jeep rear-ended a Honda on Benning Road Northeast. And according to investigators, the driver of the Honda got out and fired several shots into the Jeep, killing the driver. The suspect then ran away from the scene, leaving two young kids behind in the back seat of the Honda. The children, thankfully, were not hurt. Wow. And I remember when this happened because I I got an alert on my phone. As you guys know, I'm subbed to all the guys on Twitter, Kill Mo News, DC Real Time News, Alan Henney. I'm subscribed to all those guys that cover this stuff moment to moment, everything that's happening in the city. So I heard it was a homicide and whatnot. I was like, that's pretty early. But wow, to find out that this is what actually happened. A guy in a Jeep rear-ended a Honda. And I know exactly where this is. This is right by the station, the train station. Guy rear-ended him. While he has two kids in the car. Two small children in the car. He gets out. Shoots the guy in the Jeep dead and then runs off into the <laughs> the morning light <laughs> and a lot of you guys will say well <laughs> this is because of red line in it <laughs> and Reaganomics and not enough investment into programs. What program would have stopped this? Because if you got your kids in the car and you get into an accident and it's a lot of police around here. Well, I ain't gonna say a lot of police, but it's not hard to find a police flag down a police officer around here. The train station is right there. You could you could get a um a Metro Transit police officer. If your kids in the back seat of the car won't stop you from murdering a man in broad daylight, and then you just run off and leave them, what program or what incentives in any program or what, you know, if they had not redlined back in the 60s so that y'all could have lived around gliders. Cause that's really what redlined. They mad because gliders ain't want them to live around them. So that's what they. That's what redlining is. Them whining about not being able to live around gliders. Not being able to get the heck about it to stay in. But um, what would have... Like... I just I'm just confused as to like what what is your fix for this? Which happens all the time. What what fix is this? I really want to know because you guys know that I'm on record saying that there is no cure for this. Nothing will fix this. But some of you guys are smarter than everybody else. And you can tell us what fixes this because I'm telling you, man. I don't know what more incentive than having your small children in the back seat of a car. Now, we don't know what the driver of the Jeep did. And, of course, he's most likely a son, man, because there wouldn't have been that tense, you know... Just quick, like, on-edge reaction if the driver of the Jeep was a glider or a crouching tiger or even an ombrito. Because you, sun people feel like they can reason with other groups. They don't feel like they can reason or rationale or, you know, problem solve with other sun people. So... 
the, the, the small things become, you know, get taken to the fullest extent very quickly because, you know, you look and you say, oh, that's a son, man. Oh, he ain't going, we ain't going to be able to talk this out. So let me just go ahead and take you to DEFCON 12 before he does. So we know, we know the other driver of the car was a Jeep. Now, what did he say? What happened? What? I mean, I walked past this place right here a thousand times in my life, at least a, at least at least two hundred. Um, <laughs> like that hour of the morning people are going to work they're going to their school they're going to the programs yeah there's stuff going on around there you know in in the back streets and whatnot and in the apartment complexes but not at this time really there's a police station right across the street literally well it used to be they moved never mind they moved they used to be right across the street they moved but um I just don't know what what the cure for this is. I'm I'm sorry. Security camera captures the sound of gunfire on Herman Street. But maybe more vividly recorded in Jennifer Pennington's memory. Everything just happened so fast. Unrelated to the shooting, she had called an ambulance to take her mother for a health issue as Pennington was waiting in her car to follow the ambulance. Next thing you know, I heard some gunshots go off. These shots. If I get out of the car, I might get shot. If I stay in the car, I might get shot. Didn't know what to do. Police say the gunfire erupted after a bizarre road rage incident because the ambulance was blocking the already narrow Herman Street. The shooter was backing his car up one way and the victim was coming in another. When they met, there was an argument about who should pull over to let the other pass? Didn't I tell you? These interactions, when it's Sun Man on Sun Man, it's just, it goes to DEF CON 11,000, just like that. The chain of events. This woman, because <laughs> we know that, you know, Gladys are responsible for all our problems. This woman actually contributed to the crime in the community by calling an ambulance for her mother. Ambulance is blocking the street. One son man <laughs> is trying to back up. Another son man's coming into the street. And instead of just saying, oh, Man, listen, man, me, I, I guess I'm just a nice guy. I move over like, here, yeah, you go ahead. Because I'm just, it ain't that serious, man. That little bit of just contact between two sun men led to a shooting. And it all stemmed with this woman calling an ambulance for her mother. Wow. The already narrow Herman Street, the shooter was backing his car up one way and the victim was coming in another. When they met, there was an argument about who should pull over to let the other pass. There was a perfect storm of all kind of thing happening at once and escalating to a ridiculous point. Police say the gunman is 25-year-old Triante Perrin, who's never been arrested on a violence charge, but one family says he threatened them with a gun about a year ago over a parking spot. Travante. <laughs> Another family says he threatened them with a gun a year ago over a parking spot. The summer of Floyd, the black Estanian spring, the emboldening and entitling of Sun Man criminals is going to go down as one of the biggest just calamities 
that this country has ever done. Because I don't know now how you turn this off. How do you turn this off? Without another crime bill. Police say the gunman is 25-year-old Triante Perrin, who's never been arrested on a violence charge, but one family says he threatened them with a gun about a year ago over a parking spot. It was scary because, you know, what was we going to do? This man didn't want to be identified, but says it was at the same place, and he's sure it was Perrin. You recognize him? Yes, I you know. You wouldn't forget that guy's face? Never. The victim was hit twice, once in the chest and once in the leg, after a series of gunshots started by an argument about who should pull over that threatened an entire neighborhood. It's not worth it, man. Just not worth it. Yeah, now that woman is expected to recover. Meanwhile, <laughs> it was a sister. <laughs> He shot a sister, someone who would have protested for him. Let's just say the previous encounter that Treyante had. Let's say Treyante, when he pulled the gun on the glider a year ago over the parking space. Because, you know, the cops just come when, when glider's in trouble. The cops just swoop out of trees, right? So... The cops just swarm and descend. You're messing with a glider. You're in extra trouble. You're not just in trouble. You're in trouble trouble. And, you know, <laughs> roughed him up and whatnot. <laughs> Punched him a couple times while he was fighting with them to get away. That sister who you shot, Treviante, Treyante, whatever, she would have been protesting for you. She would have had her little daughter, her little kid out there. With, you know, police is doing tear gas and rubber bullets and <laughs> deranged, pasty liberals are out there playing war games with cock Molotov cocktails and bricks. She would have had her little daughter out there protesting for you. A little six, seven-year-old daughter out there protesting for you. And you shot her? Just over like... <laughs> you... <laughs> you backing up and she coming in and it's obvious. It's you, you backing up so you know that... You could understand how you backing up could be good to like somebody could be like, hey, what's going on? Like, you could just, hey, is there an ambulance down here? Um, we got to back up. You can't go. Oh, okay. So can you scoot up? Or I just move over. You can go by if you want, cause, but you're going to be stuck because <laughs> there's an ambulance down there blocking the street. So either we, you back up and I back up, or you go forward and get stuck, and then I'll back up when you go past. Like, he shot her. Multiple times. <laughs> Torso. Body. Trying to kill her. The victim was hit twice. Once in the chest and once in the leg. After a series of gunshots. Started by an argument about who should pull over. That threatened an entire neighborhood. It's not worth it, man. Just not worth it. Yeah, now that woman is expected to recover. Meanwhile, police are still searching for Perrin. Reporting live, Brian Hemrick, WLWT News 5. Just a bizarre situation there, Brian. Now, did, any, did you find anyone else who's had trouble with that suspect at all? Yeah, well, police say uh, Perrin doesn't have a violence record. However, there were a number of calls over parking-related issues at that very address where he lives. Uh, they said there was one earlier this year, but there were between six and eight of them every year going back to 2018. Ash that brother territorial, man. <laughs> 
He territorial, man. So he's always and he, he's our, our brother um Traviante is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The stand was always bad. But since 2020, May 26, 2020, it's just been exponentially worse. Our buddy Traviante used to always be doing stuff, always used to be, you know, rah-rah, you know, with people. But now he's shooting women <laughs> in broad daylight. Over basically nothing. That's what I'm telling you. It's always been bad to stand. Now it's worse, which was almost inconceivable. A Memphis woman charged after police say she threatened a woman at gunpoint in an elementary school carpool line. Thanks. Shun Drika. And I told you, like, I don't have a problem with these names. They benefit the public. When you look at that name, you can determine whether this is somebody I want to deal with or not. Back in the 60s and the 70s, you couldn't dif differentiate. Some men and some women had names, simple names. Clifford, Ann, Rose, Gertrude, Beatrice, Joanne. <laughs> Gene, Robert, James. <laughs> so you couldn't, you, you had to, you know, you had to invest into a personal meeting before you could figure out whether this was the way you wanted to go. Nowadays, because of these names, you can just look on a piece of paper and be like, no, thank you. Without getting... Without the personal interaction, you just, oh, nah, I'm good. That, nah. You know? <laughs> you look at the guest list at a party. Shun Drink. I, uh, Netflix and chill tonight, Jack. <laughs> Thanks for joining us with the News at 6. I'm Stephanie Skurlock. And I'm Greg Hurst. WRG's Kwametra Wilborn speaks or breaks down what led to the encounter. But when there's no one out there to control traffic, you got people out there speeding. You got, you know, you know other you know, kids showing out. You know, and traffic is going haywire for the, for the minute. Parents like Mario Dye admit picking up their kids from school can be stressful at times. Yeah, I done got pretty mad, but I ain't, I ain't whipped out the gun. How and listen, when I was in D.C. Um, like, a couple weeks ago, um, I took my cousin to go pick up his daughter at school. <laughs> God, it's same thing. Same thing. Um, we need supervision, man. <laughs> if we're not supervised, man, like, and I think that's one thing why, that we love about gliders. And even on Britos and, and Crouching Tigers, for that matter. They provide structure in our lives. Because <laughs> when they're not around, it's chaos, man. I seen it. I mean, I literally saw it. Um, but I, see, I'm smart. I circled the block. I didn't stay there and, you know, moving and trying to, you know, dip and dart in and out. I just circled the block until he... Because <laughs> nowadays, because of the pandemic, they're not like releasing the kids like they used to. You know how kids used to, three o'clock, all the kids just run out the front door? Now it's like they're releasing them like staggered in classes and the parents got to wait. And these schools are like... You just basically got a bunch of sun people, you know, in their cars, some on their feet, you know, agitated because the kid's not coming out on time. They got places to go. They got might got to pick up another kid or, you know, got things. Got to pick up a kid at daycare, you know, or got to, something other else they got to do or you had a hard day's work or whatever. And now the kids aren't, you don't know when your kid's coming out. 
there's nowhere to park, you know, close. Other parents, all that energy, hunt, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 parents out there. They're all, you know, from the stand. They're all standians, real standians. I mean, you know, like real deal standians. Relatively young, because if the kids are in elementary school, some of these people may be 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. It's just a combustible situation. And I had I not done that a few weeks ago over there on Benin Road <laughs> in D.C., the trenches, I would have a different perspective. I, I completely can understand what these parents go through. But when there's no one out there to control traffic, you got people out there speeding, you got, you know, you know other you know, kids showing out. You know, in traffic is going haywire for the, for the minute. Parents like Mario Dye admit picking up their kids from school can be stressful at times. Yeah, I done got pretty mad, but I ain't, I ain't whip out the gun. However, Memphis police say that's exactly what Shandrika Williams did last month. According to court documents, the victim says it all started when she was sitting in an elementary school carpool lane and a white Ford Explorer nearly hit her vehicle. The victim says she honked at the Ford Explorer, but for some reason, this made the driver, who was later identified as Williams, angry. Police say Williams started arguing with the victim and even followed her into the school, making threats. Shandrika was about to hit her. If that happens. Somebody's driving and they're about to hit you. You just honk it to let them know you're there. I do that. Like, if I feel like somebody's going to hit me, I just honk it. They're like, oh, you know, and, and that happens with me, too. I may, you know, be being careless and somebody honks, like, oh, oh, my bad. I'm not like, oh, now we have to, like, now I must kill you. Like, <laughs> There's no cure for this, so let me stop, you know, <laughs> getting wrapped up in it. But she follows the woman into the school making threats. So there's children around. This is a this is a, a elementary school, and she's following another woman into the school. And when we talk about making threats, you know how we're not talking about like Miss Missy. I don't like what you did. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'll have your. Mom. No, it was. It's it, we're talking about. Just listen to a rap CD. Listen to any the the baby or. You know, little baby or ba any one of the babies or any one of the littles or any one of the youngs. <laughs> Listen to any one of them. They're rap. That's what she was saying. Police say William started arguing with the victim and even followed her into the school, making threats. The victim left the school, but things didn't stop there. Memphis police say Williams followed the victim who had her 11-year-old son in the car onto Gidwell near American Way and rammed into the back of her vehicle. After the victim dropped her son off at school, Memphis police say Williams continued to follow the victim on the roadways, ramming into her. I'm sorry, man. Only in Memphis, man. Shout out to Memphis, man. <laughs> Y'all make... Y'all keep this channel lit. The news anchor's name is Kwamitra Wilborn. <laughs> and we supposed to believe that this is a racist country. She filled out an application. Somebody looked at that application and was like, all right, call her up. Tell her to come in for an interview. <laughs> now she's on the news. And she's good. I mean, I'll give her credit. She is, she, she doesn't sound like a Kwamitra. But. Wow. Kwamitra Wilborn. After the victim dropped her son off at school, Memphis police say Williams continued to follow the victim on the roadways, ramming into her at least two more times. 
Reports say Williams even threw items at the victim's vehicle. MPD says the third hit was so hard that it caused the victim to hit her chest on the steering wheel. Police say Williams pulled up alongside the victim and pointed a black gun at her saying, quote, B, I'll shoot you. She then drove off. People have been um, pretty much locked up for about a year. Tensions, nerves, and people quick to react. This is one thing I hate that some people do. They quickly dismiss it and give some BS answer for or, or reason attributed, attribute some BS reason to why it happened. This has nothing to do with no pandemic because these, listen, I'm a sun man. A, a lot of the people here who glide as the sun people were not locked up in the house. Every corner store in the hood had a dudes out front they just might have had a mask on their chin they would do i would listen last easter and you know when easter is there were so many easter egg hunts that i i didn't stop at but i drove through while driving through the city going you know to see people that i can't even count okay Summer of 2020, the Sun Man was outside as if nothing happened. Now, gliders and other groups were in, you know, middle to upper upper class Sun people. But these Sun people are over here, what they talking about? They ain't been locked up a day in their life unless they've been in jail. They was not social distancing. They weren't. Ask one of these people to put a mask on, they might kill you. Okay? What he said is crap. But that's what some people do. They always I'm surprised he didn't just say, well, you know, it because you know the tension, the racial tension in the in the country is causing it, it would have been any time any time if you would asked him this in nineteen ninety five, it'd have been well, you know, the president and the he, you know, he, he he cheating on his wife, and you know that's you'd asked him in two two thousand and one. Well, you know nine eleven. You asked him in two thousand seven. Katrina. You'd asked him in two thousand twelve. Well, the Trayvon. It would have always been some other reason than the reason we all know. Sun people are out of their minds. People have been. Um pretty much locked up for about a year. Tensions, nerves, and people quick to react. A warrant was issued for William's arrest, and now she's facing five counts of aggravated assault and a violation of vehicle registration charge. Reporting in Parkway Village, Kwame Wilborn, WREG News Channel 3. Williams is out of jail on a $15,000 bond. She's doing... After all that, after... Chasing this woman into a elementary school, yelling threats at her, violent threats, after ramming her car with her 11-year-old kid in it, after ramming her car two more times, after throwing stuff out the window at the woman, after pulling up beside her and pointing a gun at her, this woman got out of jail for $1,500. Because you only pay 10%. $1,500. And Shandrika, I'm sure, I bet you she swear the criminal justice system is racist. And she would say that without like, even, like, there would be any question. If you were to question it, she might shoot you. <laughs> if you were to be like, wait a second, Shandrika, but you just did all that and you got out for $1,500. She never had to encounter that. No one in her life ever spoke to her. Like, in these environments, no one says anything like that. Like, the things I say, no no one says. They've never heard that. That's why a lot of times you'll, you'll see them, like, even if they call in, even if they hit the StreamYard link when I'm going live on OptiNation TV, certain some men, they've never heard these things from anybody. So the... You know, the first is, you ain't black, or you, you a cool, like, just, like, she thinks everything's racist and everything's not, even, even, it doesn't matter the fact that she's just running around some wild commando, 
lunatic with a gun, just doing whatever she wants, running up in elementary schools, ramming people's cars all over the road, pointing guns out her window. No cop stopped her. No cop came and put a knee on her neck. But you could not, I promise you, I'm telling you, I promise you, if you even hinted to this woman that the whole structure and institution of everything around her wasn't completely racist to the core and out to get her and the reason and, and you know had her she was the like it was about the whole system wasn't just there the whole system was based on holding her down that's the thing you gotta understand they think they don't think that like you know gliders got jobs gliders got families vacations you know problems they think Everything is geared towards shutting them down and making their life hard. If you were to hint to that, that that wasn't the case. This woman who just did all this and had this experience that we see from the legal system, she would either melt down, call you names, Uncle Tom or something, it may even get physically violent with you. That's where we're at, and that's why there's no solution to this. Just enjoy your time in America. Hope the rest of the sun people don't mess it up for you. Don't get us all kicked out of this country. And thank your lucky stars. You don't live in a <laughs> predominantly sun country.